Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan back for some more amazing chemistry times. In this video, we are going to explain the movement of electrons within atoms as they absorb or emit different amounts of energy. As always, breaking it down. Numero uno. Let's define and explain two terms. Ground state, excited state. I am so excited. Numero Two, we are going to explain the concept of emission spectra, and then finally, numero three. We're gonna tell the difference between an atom in the ground state and an excited state using its electron configuration. <sighs> okay, so it is super important to know that atoms will exist in two states in relation to energy. Now, the lowest potential energy state of an atom is what's known as its ground state. However, an atom can also exist in what's known as the excited state. Woo! I'm so excited! And this is just a state in which its electrons are in higher energy levels than they would be when they're in the ground state or when they're in the lowest energy levels possible. So here's a thriller of an animation that's showing you how two atoms oscillate between the ground state and the excited state. Notice initially that this atom is in the ground state its electron is in the lowest energy level possible. However, notice that now, after it has absorbed a specific amount of energy, it is no longer in the ground state. It is now what we call the excited state. Now, in order for electrons to move to a higher energy level, they must gain a specific amount or a specific quantum of energy. So again, notice that in order for this electron to jump up, it has to absorb a specific amount of energy. Keep in mind though, when electrons fall back from the excited state, a specific amount or quantum of energy is released that is equal to the energy difference between the two orbitals or levels. As you continue to be mesmerized by this thrilling animation, notice that once in the excited state, as it falls back to the ground state, it gives that energy off. And again, the energy is exactly equal to the difference between the two energy levels. Now, I like to think of it as sort of a stair step or a ladder in the electron cloud. The electrons can only exist on a, a given step. There is no step and a half. They've either got to absorb enough to move up a step or they're gonna stay exactly where they're at. Additionally, it's important to know that as they return back to the ground state, or as they move down energy levels, they'll be giving off specific amounts or quanta worth of energy. Here's a really great image to help you better understand this idea. Here I've got my initial energy level. Here's my second energy level. As the electron falls back down from that second to the first energy level, it's gonna give off a photon worth of energy. That energy can be calculated by measuring the frequency of that photon of light that's given off. Plug it into the formula for energy of a photon, which is Planck's constant times frequency. Okay, now I really like this animation to help us better understand what's going on with the movement of electrons within an atom. This sphere is gonna represent our atom. Notice that its electron is in the first main energy level. We are also shooting photons of red light at that atom. However, the electron remains in the first main energy level. The photons of red light are not enough energy to get it to move up to the second main energy level. However, by changing the energy of the photons of light that we're firing at this atom, get the electron to move up to its second main energy level. Notice that as soon as it's up there, it falls immediately back down. Electrons prefer, if you will, to be in the ground state. They don't like to have a lot of energy. They like to be lazy. And they can be lazy by hanging out in the ground state. So as soon as they get up there, they're like, man, this takes a lot of energy. I'm gonna be lazy, just give this energy back off. In order for me to get this electron to jump up to that third main energy level, I have to increase the energy of the photons of light to match the difference in energy between that first and third energy level. Again, notice that as it falls back down, it's giving off specific quanta or specific amounts of energy of light. Now, as we finish up here, you should recognize that the emission spectrum of an element is the intensity of each frequency of electromagnetic radiation emitted by the atom as the atom's electrons return from the excited to the ground state. And so as you look at your screen, the emission spectra of different elements are shown. You don't see the entire spectrum of visible light because the electrons can only exist in specific energy levels. It was scientists studying the interaction of light with matter that led us to further advance our understanding of the structure of the atom. And that electrons couldn't just exist anywhere in the electron cloud 
but in specific energy orbitals. Because as we study the emission spectra, we don't see the entire visible light spectrum. We only see specific energies or frequencies of light. Now, it's important to recognize that scientists have studied the amounts of energy being given off by the electrons of different elements. And as you take a look at your screen, you can see a representation of some of the different energy series that are given off by the electron and atom of hydrogen. Some of those series have pretty crazy names, like the Lyman and Balmer series. Again, just a fun fact, this has been studied pretty intensely.